In this movie, I'm going to talk about some of the ways I create custom navigation in my e-learning projects and share some tips that maybe can help you as well. I'm going to start by giving some examples of ways I use graphics to create custom navigation. So here's an example of one I did recently where we were talking about different types of handbags, a subject I happen to know a fair amount about, being a woman. Uh, in this case, we just put, brought in little icons and put the name of the bag and you just click on the bag. It would take you to a page to talk about that style and also give you an option to go to a shopping cart and purchase it. Here's another example of one I did recently. This involves photography. So there are little icons I use that look like old fashioned cameras and each one is a topic in the course and I put the topic underneath it. It's very easy for them to click on it and navigate. And here's another example. This one's set up a little bit differently, but I used this in a course where I was doing branching. So this appeared within a particular lesson that allowed them to go and visit other, other areas and learn more about different content and then come back to the lesson again. So this takes up a lot of space on a slide. So for something like this, you'd want to use it on a clean slide or, or maybe a slide where you just didn't have a lot of content. Here's another example of how I use graphics with navigation. This is really popular right now in e-learning where a scenario or a scene is created. So this stuff was all created in Illustrator, but I just bring in my background and all the individual pieces. And then I just tell the learner, I want you to click on each piece to learn more about it. But in this case, not every item is clickable. So you I think it's important to give them some kind of hint to click on it. So here's what I did in this case. I just have little orange boxes that appear around the objects as they hover over them. So you can see that the memos hanging on the wall, the wallpaper, the carpeting, none of those things are clickable, only the things that are highlighted. I think that's nice. It's a nice way to guide your learner. And vertical navigation can work as well. Here's an example I did recently of vertical navigation, and it gave a listing of the top executives of the company. And for this particular instance, may I show you that I made them all women because it's my content, I can do that. So again, vertical navigation can work, but you wanna keep it separate from the rest of the content on the main slide so that it doesn't get confusing. So now let's talk about ways you can use text to create custom navigation. So here is an example, and I use this in a lot of my courses. I used it in this one as well. Just a neutral box that has text in it that's either at the top or bottom of the page. I use the top whenever possible. And then you can do things like maybe have a letter appear when they're on that particular slide, have, have it appear in color or be bold. Um, down here in this example, lesson one was already visited. So it stays that color so the learner knows they've already visited that lesson and they're ready to move on to lesson two. Here are just two other quick examples where you can just put text. You don't even need to put colored boxes or anything behind them. You can just have text. Make it large enough that it's readable. Um, sometimes just a clean rule above or below it also looks great. And here's another example where you can just simply use buttons. I just use rectangles because I design in flat design style. So I just use basic rectangles. You can use any buttons you want. But again, this works just like it would on a, a regular website so that once they've clicked on that lesson, it stays gray and they know they're ready to move on to the next one. And finally, I'll just offer some tips for working with uh, creating your own custom nav bars. Always keep contrast in mind, not only for your handicapped learners, but also you just don't have any control over what kind of brightness settings your users are using. You don't know what kind of computers they're using. So it's always a good idea to keep it high contrast whenever possible. So this top example is a good one, a good example of high contrast. This one below it is low contrast. This would not be advisable because if somebody had their brightness setting really high, they may not even be able to read this. So keep contrast in mind always when you're designing. My second tip involves distraction. <laughs> I try not to distract my user. I want them to know where that nav bar is and for it to be easily accessible. You can see the one I have up here is just a plain, dark, very kind of thin um, background, very neutral color. It's easy for them to read, but it's not drawing their attention away. 
This bright red bar would do the opposite of what I want. It would distract my user and they wouldn't be able to concentrate on the content on the slide. They would constantly be looking up at that bar. So keep that in mind. Try not to distract people with your navigation. And lastly, you always want to test your navigation thoroughly so your learners don't get stuck. Um, so for example, you know, just this little graphic here, if they were going to lesson one and then I'm going to do some branching from there, maybe go off to some little mini courses within lesson one, I always have to make sure that if they're in the middle of one of those mini courses that they can get back to all the different lessons, get back to where they need to be. So make sure you test thoroughly before you're ready to launch. And these are just some of the uh, examples and some of the tips that I have on creating custom navigation in your e-learning projects.